Let's talk now for a moment on in-camera HDR, which is a function that a lot of newer DSLRs are including now. Now, in-camera HDR is either gonna be incredibly useful or something that you absolutely want to avoid, and it really depends on one thing, whether the in-camera HDR function also records the raw files and keeps them on the card, or if it only keeps the final HDR processed version. Now, if your camera only keeps the final HDR processed version and it throws out all the other sequenced images, then basically once you get the image into post-production, if you don't like it, then you have no other option because you have none of the original files that went into creating that processed file. In addition, if your camera, say, can record and process an HDR version image or HDR process image in camera, but it can only do it when shooting the bracketed images in JPEG mode, once again, that becomes a big limitation because once we get into post, the techniques that we're gonna be teaching do require you to have the original raw files. Now, moving to a camera like the 5D Mark III, we pretty much use the HDR mode exclusively when shooting HDR images because it's very, very functional. It allows us to still record in whatever file format that we choose. It'll process the version as a HDR process version and we can choose basically what type of bracketing settings, what type of exposure value spacing, and the camera will do everything, including process it according to whatever processing style we select as well. This is very useful because in the camera we can get just right away an immediate representation of what this scene looks like with the in-camera HDR processing. Now, more often than not, once we get into post, as we mentioned before, we do throw out that uh, basically camera process uh, image because I'd rather reprocess the raw files and get exactly what we need since software-based HDR processing is going to be more powerful than your in-camera HDR processing. But it's a great feature because the camera is controlling everything, and I do mean everything. With the internal HDR mode on the 5D Mark III, I can use mirror lockup. I can set it to a two-second timer. I can set my uh, bracketing sequence with the number of frames as well as the exposure value spacing in the camera. Press the shutter once, It'll do an automatic countdown from two seconds down to zero, and it'll take all the shots in that sequence with the mirror up. The unique thing is that if you use auto exposure bracketing with the mirror lockup feature on a lot of cameras, you still have to press your shutter release button actually multiple times. You have to press it once with each shot to open the mirror and once again to take the shot, and you have to do it three times because basically we have to do that whole process three times. That means you're pressing it six times with a three frame, two stop bracketed sequence. This is even when you have the continuous mode turned on. So using the HDR mode in the camera basically makes it so we don't really need to use a shutter release because the camera's gonna do everything on its own even with the mirror lockup on. Now with the mirror lockup turned off, most cameras with auto exposure bracketing will take all three shots with only one press of the shutter, which still makes it useful to use the two second timer on those cameras but it won't do it with the mirror lockup. That's one big feature that we're gonna discuss that is gonna improve the overall sharpness of the images because as the mirror on your camera does open and close, it does create a little bit of vibration which in turn reduces a little bit of that image quality in your overall uh, sequence of images. So if you have an existing DSLR, look into whether or not it has the HDR mode. If it does, look in your manual, play around with it, figure it out, and find out if it actually will keep the original raw files in addition to the HDR processed image. If so, then it's a great function to use because it's gonna really simplify the shooting process for your HDR photos. When looking into purchasing a new camera, this might be a big feature that you want to have if you are big into shooting HDR photographs because again, it's gonna make your life much, much easier. Pretty much throughout the entire workshop or throughout all of our entire tour, uh, filming through Utah and Arizona and Vegas and everything, we didn't have to use our shutter release once because the internal HDR mode in the Canon 5D Mark III basically allows to do everything on a timer. We hit the shutter release once, the timer counts down, and it does everything in one fail swoop just all by itself, which is a great feature to have because it eliminates one piece of equipment that we would need to carry along, which is the shutter release. All right, hopefully this helped out. Let's go on to the next video.